And I thought, I want to become the change. I wanted to show them that it's possible. Today, I speak all around the world and I talk about this. But I had to make the move myself because I saw the bigger picture. Again, back to strategic thinking, which is one of the key pillars of strategic project leadership. It's about how do you think beyond today? And how can you help your organization also think that way and become the catalyst that helps drive that? And Welcome to The Change Lead, the podcast providing leaders with the insight needed to get things done in a rapidly changing and complex world. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. Connect with our community of like-minded leaders on our website, thechangelead.com. Welcome to The Change Lead with your host, Babatope Ipiyumi. Projects are vehicles of transformation. A business with plans to integrate a newly acquired company will run an integration project to achieve transformation. Similarly, a family with plans to relocate from, let's say, Paris to London will run a relocation project to achieve this kind of transformation. Individuals, companies use projects as vehicles of transformation. The more strategic project leaders are, the more effective and long-lasting the resulting transformations become. So, what does it mean to be a strategic project leader? Can we all become strategic project leaders? To discuss this with me today is Fola Labi. Now, Fola is a lifelong project leader. In the words of Fola, life in and of itself is a project. As a keynote speaker and podcast host, she brings a wealth of insights to what it means to be a strategic project leader. In this episode, Fola and I have a conversation about the strategic product leader. Stay tuned. I'm sure you enjoy it. Hey, Fola. Really great to, for you to join me on the show today. Thanks for the, making the time and the, really looking forward to today's conversation. Fantastic. I want to say thank you so much, Baba Talkba, for inviting me to be part of the show. And I cannot wait to share a bit of my little experience to definitely inspire someone out there who's actually listening. So thank you so much. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Looking forward to it. Um, so just to start, what I always do is I always try and get to know my guest a little bit before having this conversation. So I was look, doing some research on yourself. And I think topic today, the strategic project leader. And one thing, the way you, I always look at how people position and brand themselves. So I think one thing you've used is like you're the founder and catalyst of the strategic project leader. I found that quite interesting. You also provide keynotes. One of the keynotes that you, you, one of the topics for your keynotes is around the topic of rebirth, how you transition from being a project manager to being a strategic project leader. So what That's that right. tells me, you do have a perspective of being a project manager, project leader, without necessarily being strategic. So it'd be good to start there. What does it really mean to be a strategic project leader? Before I get into that, I think it's always great to give some background. My journey into the world of project management started about 19 and a half years ago, where I got the role as a PM for the Department for Transport. And I led the transformation. This was a while back now. Listen, I can't believe that I'm actually that old. But the fact is through my journey, I have managed projects as well as worked within the project management office where we manage the governance and we look at how we can ensure that all the projects are delivered on time and scheduled and on budget. However, as I, look, I looked through, I found an opportunity. I realized that project management, as we actually see it, we think about the triple constraints of delivering projects on time, we think about the budget, we think about the schedule. That's awesome. That's great. However, when we think about the fact that organizations are set up to deliver value period and the strategies are definitely set at the very, very top level, the C-suite level. And when the C-suite set strategies at the beginning of the year and that's actually been revisited, the strategies and the strategic goals are actually documented and prioritized. And then projects are actually then set up. They're trying to bet it off of those strategies. And the PM then sits within a particular, just a little bit of a window where PM is brought in 
to drive a project and after that project actually delivered, they actually step away. And then, but when you look at from idea to benefit realization, there is a missing link where the PM who was probably brought in to deliver an IT transformation comes in and goes, the actual benefit of the why, which was in the business case, may not really be fully utilized, may not be fully actualized, that's the word. And so how can we ensure that that really happens? I have found that there is a golden thread that sits from strategy um, um, definition and design through to realization where project management as it is, plays a pivotal role to help organizations drive that. And so being a PM is great, but elevating to become a strategic project leader means that you go beyond the tactical, where you don't go and think about how does this piece connect strategic goals and objectives? What are the market drivers? What's the, the economics behind this? And so you become that asset, you become a key driver to help organizations achieve their goals. And so beyond just delivering your piece of work, you only, you then also create what I call a triple win, where organizations achieve their goals and objectives, that's one. You are able to advance your career as well because now you become that person who understands the business, understands projects as well. And obviously when they think about the next person's gonna get the next promotion, definitely it's gonna be Baba Tunde, right? Because he's not just the PM who delivers just that piece of work. He understands how everything actually connects. So I came about the concept of becoming a strategic project leader because there's an opportunity that we could actually leverage and create something even bigger and better. Nice. I, li I like that. Um, I think it's, it's key that you're not just tactical in your, your approach. It's very easy as project managers to focus all attention on hitting a milestone that is a month away instead of taking a step back. What is, the, I think the word you use, the value, the, uh, the it starts from the value. Businesses are set up to deliver value at the beginning of the That's year right. or the beginning of the, their cycle. You say, what is, the, what is the value we're looking to bring? And the projects, the way I see it, it's more like a, a vehicle for transformation, a vehicle that yeah. delivers value. Um, I, think, I like the, the concept of the, the triple win as well, as in I think, I think that's key. <laughs> you, help that's the, right. you, help the, you help the business. And you help yourself in, in, the, in the process. In the process. Um, and the third the, win is actually the economy. The economy actually benefits because when we have more projects that are strategically aligned, delivering strategic value, it means they were definitely putting in something better into the economy, right? Where we, we actually, part of the catalyst that makes that happen. So it's definitely exciting. I love the way you picked up the fact that you call it value because my program is called the Value Accelerator. As a strategic project leader, you become a value accelerator for your organization. Nice. Nice. Okay. So... I switch gears slightly. I know the first time we spoke, you I think something that came across quite clearly was you had this concept of a project lifestyle. I think, yeah. I think I've seen this phrase you've used where life in itself is a project. Yes. Um, so that is unique. A lot of project practitioners don't have that phrase or that's not top of mind when you speak with them. So it'd be good to get your take on that. Can you talk to that a little bit? What does it mean? to have a project lifestyle? Fantastic, I love that question. When you think about project management, I wanna take you back on a journey a couple of years ago. For me, being um, a leader, people kind of see the front end and they don't realize the probably like the struggles that actually came through. I was one who, I had a team, I was making six figures, you know, traveling all around the world. I have it or something that was actually missing for me. I wanted more. If it means about that holistic success where you thrive at work and you thrive at home. And at that particular time, I was going through a tough time in my life and I looked at everything. I remember a friend of mine came in and said, you know, Fola, what's really going on? When I have like difficult measures and acquisitions and dealing with difficult stakeholders, you are able to turn things around. Like, right? how come it's not really going on perfectly well? in your personal life. And I'm like, yes, there's something missing. And so what happened was I had to go in, you know, I, I looked, did some journaling to understand what exactly is the missing piece. And I looked at, when I looked at the holistic life, I found that, that my spouse, for instance, is my stakeholder. And I am like, how come I cannot have constructive conversation? How do I leverage this at work? When we are in difficult situations, do I throw in the towel and say, that's it? Or do I, you know, 
Think about a path and a plan on how I need to tackle what isn't going right. And that was the first turning point for me. At the time, I was going through a very rough patch. But I must tell you, after all that, I rekindled my relationships and I created something even way, way better than before. And I took that. In SPL, Strategic Project Leader Inc. was actually better off of that. I see Project Management as that foundational piece from planning, from cost, from cost management, to procurement, to communication. Just think about all of that. To risk management, how do you leverage that as an entrepreneur, even as a you know professional as well? And it has been transformational for me. And so beyond just getting the six or seven figures in your bank account, I am about amplifying success. So as a strategic project leader, you leverage the same similar skills. It's just a mindset shift where you see things differently and you create, I say, the life you truly crave. Indeed, I think that, that's nice. It's, like I said, it's, it's a very unique take on using the, the, the skills, the, the principles of being a project leader that you bring, you actually become a holistic, you make sure you have a holistic, um, how, what, what do you do? Your holistic success so it's not yes. just success in your career but success in your, in your personal life as well i think that, that is absolutely brilliant um i might come back to that before for now um if one thing that you mentioned there was in your personal life it improved the people around you you your relationship with your partner improved i think that's key if we switch that and talk about stakeholders that we have so in yes. in business you have stakeholders. You have yes. The stakeholders could be the, the leaders of the organization. They could be your the head of sales, the sales leads. They could be developers. They could be technology leaders. They are stakeholders. That's and right. As part of being a strategic project leader, one thing that's important will be how do you partner with these stakeholders? Um, it's not uh, we're using the business context, but. It's, applicable as well to the personal life as well. So I right. try to straddle the both um, topics at the same time. Um, yes. So how can you become a true partner? Are there steps, principles, or maybe a, a narrative that you can use to explain it and tease it out? How do you become a real partner in as a strategic project leader? Yeah, I love that question. First off, for those who are actually listening, when you think about the word stakeholder, a stakeholder is anyone who will be impacted by your work, it could be positive, it could be negative. So it doesn't matter if it's the, the manager, the sales department, your teams, the customers, anyone at all that has any way, in any way, shape or form can actually be impacted by the outcome of your project. And when you think about it that way, you think about your personal life, you say, who has got stake in my life? Who are the people who can positively or negatively be impacted by the outcome of the work I do on a day-to-day -day basis? And how can you then become that value add that helps influence that relationships? And I ask you a question, Baba Tunde. When you think about the people around you, everyone wants a value add, right? You want someone who's going to influence and make your work better. You think about your day-to-day -day in the office, maybe when you have a complication, when you're trying to plan, you're like, who is that person that helps me with my planning? Or you think about my numbers or maybe when you have an, an IT issue, there's someone who comes to mind for you to say, I need to pull on that particular person. We all have something that we are great at. The key is about harnessing that and understanding what am I really, what are my superpowers? So that way you have something to offer. And this even ties into like the mentee-mentor relationship. I'm going, to, I'm going to come into that a little bit. But as an individual, as a professional, it's all about value. How can you become someone in the organization that people look up to? And so when you think about building relationships with, you know, C-level executives or you build relationships at maybe two levels ahead of you, when you show up at work, for instance, and you're someone who they know that will always be the problem solver rather than someone who always thinks about the issues. And you want who's going to, if they put something on your table, you're going to be like, yes, Fuller's going to fix that. But by today, it's so clear about how to simplify complexities. When you show up with value, you just attract people. You attract people who are going to be there to support and to help you. But when you're one who's always draining, you know, you think about all those Debbie Downers, as they say. You know, in every team, you have those people who always have, oh, God, this always, hell is always going to break loose. And that's okay to identify issues and risk. But when you come up with issues, 
How are you able to turn around and say, that's a problem and I also have a solution. These are the options. And that's how we need to show up. And so if you are an individual who feels that I know I want something else more, I want to create a better career for myself. It's about going back to understand what exactly do I bring to the table? How do I show up in every conversation? How do I show up when, you know, when it comes to meetings and all of that? Am I one who people want to relate with? Am I one whose name will always be on top of the list for the next promotion? Because you are that strategic partner. You are someone who's always innovating and thinking about the customers. And that is one piece that has always held me and has set me apart in my career as well. And think about starting a business. I have had from CEOs, different thought leaders on my podcast, for instance, people say, well, how did you do it? It's all about value. How am I going to help make that other person even better? And how can they make me better? It's about creating a win-win. How can you do that? That's one of the key strategies that would help you accelerate in your career. I, think I, I like that. It's really about adding value. And yeah. you're looking for opportunities to add value, like you said, in Every conversation, every meeting, how do you add value? Not just looking out for what you can get, but how do you add value to the people who have a stake in your life, stake in your career, stake in whatever you're, you're, you're trying to achieve? I think that's brilliantly very well, very well put. Um, if we go back to that concept that life in itself is a project, yeah. that means the concepts, the principles of being a strategic project leader can be applied to anything. If like project, um, one area because we, we're speaking a lot when we think about the strategic project leader, it's very easy to think of the change practitioner, so the project manager, the program manager, um, a business analyst. It's very easy to think from that perspective, but these principles can be applied to anyone. If we look at entrepreneurs, um, for for an example, because in a way. Life is an entrepreneurial activity in itself as well. Are there, how can the skills of being a strategic project leader, being a, a project manager, be applied to entrepreneurship? What are your, your thoughts on taking that? First off, I want to start off with this. I kind of call it at my quote. I say, you either work for a business or you own a business. Either way, you're in business. So when you think about it that way is every single time is all about solving a problem. When you are an employee, that's okay. You're just solving a problem for an organization. When you're an entrepreneur, you've created a business for yourself where you are the one leading the, the change to actually solve a problem. And you think about a project. So let's break it down. What is a project? A project is a temporary endeavor that creates a unique service, outcome, or result. Projects help address, I call it an immediate change. So think about the fact that you want to start a business, for instance. What are you out there? Because you, you're there because there's a need in the market, because there is a gap, let's say, when it comes to technology. That's a need. And so how do you start it off? You think, what's that great idea? Project management helps you go back to the basics and say, okay, now, when you kick off a project, what you do, you got your requirements, right? You want to understand what's the customer's needs. You have to document that. And when you document your requirements, what's next? You have to validate and test. You go back to the business and say, is this exactly what you really want? Have we actually, have I got at the right ideas? And so as an, as an entrepreneur, you go back and you test it out with your customers and you say, am I really hitting the, am I hitting home, you know, the ideas of what you're kind of thinking? And you come back to your project plan and say, for that, what resources do I need? If the customer's validated and said, yes, that's the line of what I want, then you're going to say, Okay, I'm, I'm going to need, you know, maybe uh, a design architect. If I'm if it's an IT, it's an IT business, I'm going to need people going to help me design my website. They're going to do all of this. You're going to have to put all, all those pieces down. You then go back and say, how do I break this on even further? If I get a, a design architect, what's he going to be doing? We go do a work breakdown structure, right? You're going to break it down and say, what are the different level components? And so I'm just giving this, I'm just kind of, you know, yeah. you know make you understand that. But the fact is, Project management just helps you understand what is needed and how you can actually structure. It's like a mindset. You are not more logical. You create that plan. You get the resources in. Then you can start your, you know, the path to actually move forward. So entrepreneurship is a journey and it's one that you are going to keep going through by just understanding 
the why and how you break problems. Oh my goodness. It's like a number one key that you can leverage all the time. And so when I think about from risk management, from planning, you know, from decision making to um, scalable and growth, adaptability and agility, these are all what you think about when it comes to entrepreneurship. You think about clarity. You know, you go back and when you're trying to do like for the agile folks out there, you have um, the scrum meetings. You're wondering, okay, what are we going to do next? An entrepreneur can go back and say, okay, now I've gone like this five million things I have to do. And a lot of the time they're just solopreneurs, right? And then you're like, where do I start? What do I focus on? And so it gives you the tools to understand how you flow through. You know, people always say you have an idea. That's the what. Don't think about the how. You're going to figure it out as you go. But project management helps you understand the how and how to break that idea into manageable pieces. And then you kind of know, I think I need to, you know, reprioritize that. Or I need to go back and engage this different group. Or I need to go procure something else. But you become one who is actually the force. I was reading a Harvard Business Review recently who spoke about a PM almost relating them to a CEO. Because that's what you do, right? You're given a project and you have to run it from start to finish. From idea through to delivering something that's tangible, be it a service or a product. So already as a PM, you already have the skill set as a chief execution officer or chief executive officer, whatever you want to pick. But the key here is about how are you going to deliver the value organizations need? How are you going to be an entrepreneur who creates a business that's going to stand the test of time by understanding the needs? How are you going to keep on having different projects every time, you know, to probably re refocus your brand or whatever that is. But Project Management gives you the roadmap on how to actually get there. Yeah, I, I, re, I really like that. Um, I think I see the skills of being a strategic project leader, project manager, it's a core competency. It's a core competency that everybody needs to have. Um, and you can look at it, I, I like the way, the way you positioned it. If you're a change practitioner, a project manager, you have the skill sets in you already to be a successful entrepreneur. That's one position. But also, if you're an entrepreneur, you really need to learn from the skills that project managers already have, because that will allow you, to your point, address the how. You may have a vision, but how do you actually successfully make the best of that vision? Um, and bring it to reality. Like, exactly. exactly. Yes. Um, I think there, there is a unique um, situation with project managers. So if you're on the C-suite, if you're a CEO, on the, on the table, you're dealing with a breadth of experience, a breadth of skill set. So you're dealing with sales, um, you're dealing with finance, you're dealing with technology, you're dealing with every set of stakeholders because that's the role of a CEO. There's an, that is exactly the same as a project manager. You sit on a team and it's, once again, it's this diverse skill set that you bring together to drive and bring value to the business. It's a very unique position. Most sales leads don't have the opportunity. Most tech leads don't have the opportunity. But as a project manager, it's a very unique privilege that sometimes people don't take people take for granted. You think I think it's something, even if you're starting your career very early as a project manager, it is exactly the same experience the CEO has of very diverse team bringing people together. I will even say that for the PM is even more challenging because they don't even have the authority. They are they're just influence. The CEO has got that title, right? And so they can say, I need that done. But the PM is just there with limited resources where they keep have to like, you know, using the influencing skill to say, you know, we need this. This is why you have to influence the managers to get you more resources. You know, they are constantly marketing. They are like the chief marketing officers. They're marketing the project. This is what we need to do. This is, you know, this is the risk. But, you know, so I even say they have a level of even more tenacity because they have to push and make things happen without even having the authority to do it. Yeah, I, I totally agree, totally agree. I think that's why I, I use the term the change lead because you can't, as a CEO, you can mandate things. You can, with the stroke of a pen, dictate something to happen. Maybe the right or the wrong thing, but you can. As a change practitioner, you need to lead the change. You cannot mandate it. Um, so you need to learn leadership skills to be able to do that, I think, to, to your point, brilliantly, brilliantly put. Um, I'd like to f come back to where we started, your personal journey. I think you touched a little bit on it, but it would be good for our audience to get to know a little bit more about you. How did you get on this journey of becoming the strategic project leader? 
Thank you for that. So I think we can get into this from different um, corners and stuff. For me, my journey, just like people listening, just like every one of you, uh, I have just been the one who has got dreams and I've just thought about what can I do to create what I didn't really have. And so I think about like the courses, I'm just writing a course on creating more collaborative teams. And I, I go back and I say, you know, what did I wish I had, you know, when I was in a team setting, what was missing? And so through my career, um, as I said, I started off just like a lot of you, I did customer service. Um, I did like HR a little bit when I moved, when I got to London, I went off and I did um, a master's as well. And it was interesting. It was my husband, my partner at the time, we were, we were, we're not married yet. When he came in, he, he wrote his Prince 2 exam. This was about 20 years ago. And I'm like, what is Prince 2, right, in London? And then he told me about Prince 2. He did his foundation and practitioner. And I had the Prince 2 textbook. I think I had one of the old dusty ones from back then. I'm like, this seems interesting. I'm like, I already do this, right? And so I'm like, I was interested. And so I did my research. He gave me some stuff. And I, I read a little bit about it. And for me, it was just the connection. When I read a bit more, I could see similarities. And I, I kind of do this. And I kind of understand I could actually relate. And so I took that. And I said, I really wanted this. And so I felt maybe I could pursue this as a career. He did. He went off. I think he was working for Hilliard Pocket at the time. And then I went off. Um, I saw how I could do the transferable piece. And then I landed, even before I did my Prince 2 exam, that was an interesting piece. I applied for like different roles. And I landed my first role. He was an assistant project manager for the DFT in London. And when I went for my interview, you won't believe it. The I remember the the panel. You know, when you this was an interview, I knew I was never going to pass. But I was like, wait, think about this. Your first time going to like a profession. And it was a panel of about 10 people. And not just them. I'm talking about all the age people. Like, And I'm like, who exactly is, what am I going to say? And so I just dropped my bag. And I'm like, I feel like it's just a time for you to have an ask for, can I have a glass of water, please? And then they gave me a glass of water. I'm like, you know, you go in here, I wasn't going to get it. And then I sat down, you know, they were talking about the projects. And then I, I kept asking questions, like, you know, how does this tie back to what they're doing within the, the National Rail Service? You know, I, I was just asking questions. I was just having fun, I'm telling you. Because I knew, I'm like, I'm not getting the job anyway, so why not? But anyway, that was the fastest interview that I ever got a win with. By the time I got out of the the... the Got out of the, the office before I got to the train station. I think I was heading to Charing Cross. Believe it or not, the agency called me and said, Paula, you got the job. I'm like, are you serious? But anyway, the fact is I just saw Project Mind because it was stuff that I could relate with, things I was already doing. I just wasn't calling it the names that we called it. You know, like when you say like a risk register, I'm someone that I always, I'm very, very inquisitive. I always ask questions. So I wanted to know why do we do things a particular way? Because again, I've got a first degree in philosophy. Probably that's why. And so I questioned things. And I'm very, very, you know, curious to know why. And I moved on. And maybe at the time, I'm like, oh, the money was good, right? So why not? I did that. And as I said, I, I, I did. Uh, I was working for an IT company that got bought over by the New York Stock Exchange within Pretty Moment as well. But again, through all of this, I just saw a gap. Where I feel that there was something more. Pretty Moment is actually positioned to give a bit, a bit more to it. But at the time, I felt that I... I didn't really have a voice to say anything, but I just kept going. So years kind of went by, you know, it kept coming in. And I moved to North America when I came to Canada. Uh, as soon as I came in, I got a job for an electricity company as well to my PMO. But again, it wasn't really different. North America in Europe wasn't really far-fetched. I could see the fact that part of my men, like the PMO was kind of like a nice to have. PMs are kind of there, we do projects, and then they kind of just, you know, hand it over and then they kind of move on and move on. And I thought, why are things this way? And rather than it being like a gap, I saw an opportunity to say, I need to create strategic project leaders who can really elevate. Because even when I mentor people today, they come and say, I have been managing project for like 10 years. What next? I went on a path to create this role for myself. I create a company. I've got my organization. But for a lot of people, they have hit a glass ceiling. And I thought, I want to become the change, I wanted to show them that it's possible. Today I speak all around the world and I talk about this, but I had to make the move myself because I saw the bigger picture. Again, back to strategic thinking, which is one of the key pillars of strategic project leadership. It's about how do you think beyond today? 
And how can you help your organization also think that way and become the catalyst that helps drive that? And tying back into what I call myself, I call myself a strata catalyst because there are multiple layers that actually catalyze for people in business, in career, and in life. And exactly the same principles. So for instance, when I go on and I deliver a keynote for entrepreneurs, I leverage my strap up framework. I, I go through it, but I just think about it from the perspective of them being the one running the business. And when I'm wearing the hat of an employee, I use my same principle because project management is one that is so malleable. It's one that you can leverage in different facets and different angles. So yes, that's kind of been my journey. So I started off just like you listening where I wonder what next, you know, I ask questions. I've been fired as well. And I'm like, what am I thinking when you ask so many questions? You're like, Bola, that's enough. But the fact is, I just knew there was something more. There was something, was a, there was a bigger possibility that I could actually create. And I said, I had to be the change if I couldn't see it. And so today I talk to organizations, executives as well. How could we, you know, create workplaces where people really love and they want to come to work? They're excited about it, right? And it's all about, you know, a shift from when we think about collaborative team, you know, team building. We think about how we drive projects and think about the bigger win, you know, how we look beyond just our project and look at the portfolio, look at the organization as a whole as well, and how we create something better for ourselves, which is even better. That's why I love, you know, when my concept about the triple win. So, yes, I hope I Brilliant. answered your question. You, you, you did, and I think you, you, I think, I think you still tip of the iceberg of your journey, but what you shared is brilliant. <laughs> Um, I like the enthusiasm and the passion you bring. I think it shows the amount of value there is in what you're doing, as in, in, in driving and transforming organization through the vehicle of projects. There's a lot of value there. The value to yourself as an individual, value to the organization, and value to the organization, to the economy and the society at large, which is brilliant. Um, no, think, thank you. In, in closing, I think it'd be good for our audience, whether you're watching or, or listening, how can people contact you if you want to? Oh, okay, this. thanks. For me, you can find me everywhere. Fola F. Alibi on LinkedIn. You can find me on Instagram, on Facebook as well. And LinkedIn is pretty easy as well. You can also watch some of our videos. We have great content. You go on YouTube and go follow Alibi and you, you're going to find lots of stuff. But just, just title a strategic project leader. That's it. That's the brand. And that's what we're all about. Helping you. It doesn't matter what, you know, the role you actually play. And I talk about be you an accountant, a lawyer. It's all about leveraging that skill set that can make, help you create something better, accelerate your career, become the catalyst that creates a life you truly crave for yourself. Brilliant. What I'll do is I'll put the link to your LinkedIn and YouTube in the description, so in the show notes, so anybody you can easily reach out to Fola. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a brilliant, insightful conversation. Uh, look forward to keep speaking with you. Thank you very much. Take care. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity as well. I appreciate the platform. Have yourself a good one. Thanks for tuning in to my conversation with Fola. I have certainly learned more about becoming a strategic project leader. If this episode was of value to you, please consider leaving a review wherever you get your podcast. Leaving a review is the best way to support the podcast and ensure I can continue to get brilliant guests on the show. I'd also like to invite you to continue the conversation. Please connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know what you think of the show. Now, would you like to connect with today's guest, Fola? You can find Fola's details in the show notes of today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day and see you next time.